So far this year, the James Webb Space Telescope has already revealed some mind-blowing discoveries. Two alien planets are literally falling apart, shedding their outer layers into space, while massive red monster galaxies are challenging everything we thought we knew about the early universe. And the telescope also spotted a mysterious rogue object spinning through the galaxy at breakneck speed. These are James Webb Telescope discoveries this year that changed everything. Thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers have made an exciting discovery. Two distant planets are literally falling apart, shedding their outer layers into space. This is the first time scientists have directly observed this. The first planet, K222b, is a rocky world about the size of Neptune. It orbits its star so closely that it only takes nine hours to complete a full orbit. The star's intense heat is just roasting K222b though, with surface temperatures reaching over 3,300 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,826 degrees Celsius. The heat is so extreme that the planet's surface is vaporizing, and the evaporated rock is forming this comet-like tail. Jason Wright, a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State, called it a, quote, remarkable and fortuitous opportunity to understand terrestrial planet interiors, end quote. But K222b isn't the only planet falling apart. Another planet with the catchy title BD plus 0548688 AB was spotted by the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS. It's the closest disintegrating exoplanet to Earth. As Nick Tuse, a graduate student at Penn State, put it, these planets are literally spilling their guts into space. They're learning a lot here. For example, they're noticing gases like carbon dioxide and nitric oxide around K222b, which is unusual for a planet like this. This discovery might help astronomers understand how planets are made and how they die. The JWST also made a groundbreaking discovery about the early universe this year, observing huge galaxies nicknamed Red Monsters that are forming stars at an astonishing rate. It's challenging everything scientists thought they knew about the growth of galaxies. The JWST has already shocked researchers by revealing that the early universe was filled with 10 to 100 times more galaxies than anyone expected. And some of these galaxies were way bigger and more organized than expected. At one point, scientists thought they'd found impossible galaxies so large they didn't seem to have enough material to exist. But after double checking their data, they realized these galaxies were actually closer than they thought before, meaning they weren't as big. Out of 36 massive galaxies studied, three stood out as red monsters. These galaxies are converting nearly 50% of their available material into stars. To put this into perspective, that's 500 times faster than our Milky Way. But how did these galaxies get so big so fast? Well, one idea is that cosmic filaments, huge structures connecting galaxies, might have delivered gas more efficiently to these early galaxies. Or maybe supermassive black holes were helping things along by compressing matter and speeding up star formation. There's still a lot to figure out, but these discoveries are a huge step forward. Just recently, James Webb spotted this mysterious object cruising through our galaxy called SIMP 0136. This thing is either a rogue planet way off course and alone, is a simp after all, or it could be a brown dwarf. JWST's near-infrared spectrograph has been working over time to study this object, and they've already found some wild stuff like clouds made of iron and silicate particles, and there's carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide floating around too. All this suggests that SIMP 0136 has a pretty bizarre atmosphere. It's also spinning super fast. Its full rotation takes just 2.4 hours. That gives Webb a chance to capture detailed data in record time. Even though we're still piecing together the exact chemistry of its atmosphere, scientists are excited about what we've learned. Webb's ability to pick up these details is pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible for studying objects light years away. Astronomers have also just come across one of the most distant supernovas ever detected. This 
This explosion, known as AT 2023 ADSV, took place about 11.4 billion years ago, just 2 billion years after the Big Bang. What's incredible is that it happened in a galaxy that was still in its infancy. The star that exploded was 20 times the mass of our Sun, and its death marked one of the most violent stellar eruptions ever seen. David Coulter, a researcher with the JWST team, said, The first stars were considerably different than the stars today. They were massive, they were hot, and they had truly gargantuan explosions. So these early supernovas were much brighter and more violent than anything we see in today's universe. This supernova in particular might be one of the first signs that these early explosions were even more intense than what we observe with stars today. The early universe was mostly hydrogen and helium, with only trace amounts of heavier elements, which astronomers call metals. Stars started out from a basic mix of elements, but when they exploded, they spread heavier elements into space. These elements then helped create new generations of stars. This specific supernova gives us a rare look at how that all happened. In the constellation Canis Major, about 45 million light years away, there is a galaxy called NGC 2283 that's been in the news recently thanks to, of course, the James Webb Telescope. This galaxy has a central bar of stars in the middle, kind of like a straight line or stick. Around that bar are big curved arms made of gas and new stars that are still forming, creating this kind of spiral pattern. Webb captured the glowing clusters of stars lighting up the hydrogen gas around them, which is the main ingredient for creating new stars. The process doesn't end there. When massive stars explode as supernovas, they send shock waves of gas and elements like oxygen and sodium flying through space, which then gets mixed into star-forming clouds, creating a cycle that fuels the galaxy evolution. Speaking of supernovas, NGC 2283 is home to one called SN 2023 AXU, a type 2 supernova. This happens when a giant star at least eight times the size of the sun collapses and explodes. This explosion is so powerful that it can trigger the birth of new stars from the debris, adding more gas and elements to the galaxy. Webb's infrared cameras captured this entire process, giving us some stunning images. The the James Webb Space Telescope is certainly busy. It's also diving into the mysterious world of dark matter, a substance that some scientists believe makes up about 85% of the universe, but is completely invisible to us. So how's the James Webb gonna help? Well, scientists are setting out to study a candidate particle called axions, which could make up dark matter. Axions are unstable, and when they decay, they release light particles called photons. If the axions are out there, JWST could spot these photons photons, especially in infrared light. As Elena Panetti, a theoretical astroparticle physicist, puts it, a successful discovery of this light would be groundbreaking, truly the discovery of the century, end quote. So basically what they're doing is detective work on this massive cosmic scale, sifting through the universe's noise to find clues that might hopefully lead to something that we're not even sure exists right now. Detecting these photons isn't simple. The photons JWST needs to find are extremely faint and the light they emit could be hard to tell apart from other sources of light, but the telescope's high precision and the sensitivity to infrared light make it the perfect tool for this job. The challenge isn't just finding the photons, though, it's knowing where to look. Researchers like Christopher Desert are exploring different regions in the Milky Way and beyond, and while axion decay may be rare, if axions make up dark matter, it should still happen often enough for JWST to detect. This search could, potentially unlock an entirely new understanding of the universe, possibly revealing secrets that have been hidden for billions of years. The James Webb Space Telescope also just snapped an image of a young star called Herbig Haro 30, or HH30, showing tiny dust grains that could one day turn into planets. Found in the Taurus constellation, HH30 is only about 500,000 years old, and still hidden behind a thick disk of gas and dust. You can't see the star itself, but its powerful jets and stellar winds collide with the surrounding material, creating shock waves that make the gas and dust glow. And these glowing areas help astronomers study how planets form. The dust grains in HH30 are super tiny, just a millionth of a meter across, but these little particles are amazing because they're the building blocks of planets. Then the denser parts of the disk 
disc, the dust sticks together, forming large clumps that eventually become pebbles and over millions of years could become full-fledged planets. NASA is using the James Webb to study asteroid 2024 YR4, which has a small chance of hitting Earth in 2032. Right now, the odds are about 2.3%, which is a jump from 1.3%, which was just a few weeks ago. The numbers will just keep changing as more data comes in, but fortunately, the most likely outcome is it'll be a near miss. If the asteroid does strike, though, the potential impact zone would stretch across parts of the eastern Pacific Ocean, northern South America, the Atlantic, Africa, and the Arabian Sea and South Asia, according to the International Asteroid Warning Network. This asteroid currently tops NASA's list of potential threats, with a rating of a 3 on the Torino Impact Hazard Scale. Scientists have estimated that 2024 YR4 is between 130 and 300 feet, or 40 to 90 meters wide, but they're still not sure about its exact size and composition. That is where the James Webb Telescope comes in. Using its mid-infrared instrument, the telescope will make important observations in early March and again in May. These will give astronomers a much more accurate measurement of the asteroid's size. On a lighter note though, a Canadian-led team of astronomers has made a groundbreaking discovery about how young planets form, using the James Webb in a way that's never been done before. So they focused on PDS-70, a young star 370 light years away that's surrounded by two planets in the early stages of development. This star is only about 5 million years old, and its disk of gas and dust is where the planets are forming. The team was able to get incredible detail about the planets and their environment. The telescope's tools allowed them to see how these planets are competing with their star for material to grow. Planets form through accretion, meaning they pull in gas and dust, and these planets are doing just that, expanding by gathering material from their surroundings. To get such a detailed view, the team used a special mask to block out the intense light coming from the star, letting them focus on the planets and their disk. The telescope also provided groundbreaking insights into the Phoenix Galaxy cluster this year, revealing why this galaxy is churning out stars at a crazy rate. Located 5.8 billion light years away, the Phoenix cluster is the largest ever seen, and its core galaxy has been a mystery to scientists. Normally, the central galaxy in a cluster is red and dead, meaning it's done making stars. The Phoenix galaxy is pumping out a thousand new stars every year, which is 1,000 times higher than the average galaxy. So how is this happening? Well, in younger galaxies, star formation is fueled by cold, dense gas, but the Phoenix galaxy is much older, so scientists couldn't figure out where its fuel was coming from. The breakthrough came when a team from MIT used JWST's infrared abilities to look deeper into the cluster. They discovered warm gas in the galaxy's core, a gas that's not too hot and not too cold. This gas is cooling down, providing the fuel needed for new stars. For the first time, we were able to map regions of the core where the gas is in an intermediate state between hot and cold, said the team. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.